Al Hadith Sadis Uthalathun. On Abi Huraira Taradi Allah Tana Anhu, and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Akal, Men Nafasa An Mu'minin Kurbatin Men Kurbid Dunya, Nafas Allah Anhu Kurbatin Men Kurbi Yomil Qiyama. ومن يسر على معسر يسر الله عليه في الدنيا والآخرة ومن ستر مسلم ستره الله في الدنيا والآخرة والله في عون العبد ما كان العبد في عون أخيه ومن سلك طريقا يلتلمسه فيه علما سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة وما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه فيما بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغشيته وغشيتهم الرحمة وذكرهم الله في من في من عنده ومن أبت به عمله لم يسرع به نصبه رواه مسلم in the 36th hadith the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'anhu he reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever relieves the hardship of a believer in this world Allah will relieve his hardship on the day of resurrection whoever helps ease someone in difficulty Allah will make easy for him in this world and in the hereafter. Whoever covers the faults of a Muslim, Allah will cover his faults in this world and in the hereafter. Allah helps the servant as long as he helps his brother. Whoever travels a path in search of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. A people do not gather together in the house from amongst the houses of Allah, reciting the book of Allah and studying together, except that tranquility will descend upon them. Mercy will cover them. Angels will surround them. And Allah will mention them to those with him. Whoever is slow to do good deeds will not be hastened by his lineage, Ru'ahu Muslim. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, we see many benefits, and from amongst those fawa'id, amongst those benefits, we see the importance of assisting your brothers and sisters in Islam with their needs and in their striving and to get out of difficulty and to make their affairs easier and to cover their faults and to cover their mistakes and to assist them in every kind of khair. Sheikh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyum mentions قال فالعلماء وأئمة العدل وأهل الجهاد وأهل صدقة وبدل الأموال في مرضات الله فهؤلاء ملوك الآخرة وصائف حسناتهم متزايدة تملا فيها حسنات 
وهم في بطون الأرض ما دامت أثرهم في الدنيا Ibn al-Qayyim mentions he said that the scholars and the imams of justice and the people of jihad and the people of charity and the people who spend for the pleasure of Allah verily those are the kings of this uh, of the hereafter and their pages are fi- their pages of hasana are increased and filled with righteousness so that shows us a habit of Allah, the importance of assisting one another being brothers to one another helping your muslim brothers and sisters with their various needs as much as possible let's look at a couple of different ways to make this applicable for us on how we can do that some of the times your brothers and sisters are in need of wealth so they may need sadaqah from you or a righteous loan or they might just need to be given a favor deserving of zakat they may have a crisis that needs to be addressed and perhaps you have the means by speaking about it to the people of good and who have money to raise funds for them perhaps it's a brother or sister who's unemployed and homeless who requires shelter who requires assistance and i'm going to mention this because this is a very common thing perhaps it's a brother or sister who's in need of marriage and you have the means of assisting them you know a good sister and you know this person to be of sound conduct and good character too i'm not just saying just hooking anyone up but we're talking about a habit of Allah, that when that this is a type of need this is something that people need many people are in search of spouses especially those who do not have muslim families and live in muslim societies to assist them so they often have a greater need and a greater need for that assistant for someone to assist them to someone intervene on their behalf to someone to find them a spouse or to be to be married maybe the brother you know the brother he's a good brother of good conduct and you are a good sister and you want to marry him or perhaps you know of a good sister who would be good for him and that he's an eligible person or vice versa you know the sisters in need and she wants to marry and you have the ability to help her and that can even be in the situation of with taking a second wife or a third wife if someone has the ability to do so financially and physically and even emotionally and spiritually because polygamy is not an easy thing So that is also encompassed in our understanding of this hadith because those are needs of many people in the ummah and again because we have first hand experience we know reverts and we come from that background many of us can relate and know and understand that people may not they may not receive the assistance so they are in need so this is one of the ways that we take care of the hawaij of our brothers and sisters another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us also the hirs or the vigilance of the 
Sharia in taking care of the Muslim Brotherhood and that the Muslims should feel the pain of their brothers and sisters. That doesn't mean you just go around, you're angry, you're sad all the time. No, but you should be aware and you should feel something when you see your brothers, the Igor Muslims, for example, in China being oppressed, inculcated with the most evil and wickedest of shirk and kufr and ilhad is being forced upon them. And they have no sabil. It's only with Allah. And so there are many ways to help your brothers and sisters. And there are so many of our brothers and sisters who are in need. We could talk about Philistine. We could talk about the oppression our brothers and sisters experience all over the world. The death, the destruction, the chaos. And right in our own societies. So if you have a means, a way to assist your Muslims and brothers in anything of khair, then you fall under this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in helping and assisting your brothers and sisters to deal with their difficulties, their trials and tribulations that they experience. Another benefit of this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is this hadith also shows us the fadl or the superiority of covering the faults and the mistakes and the sins of your brothers and sisters. And this hadith also warns us against spreading those faults, especially if they are things that are done privately, that only you and that person know about. There is no reason to go and spread it around the community in order to spread wickedness and chaos. Because with that, the one who wishes to spread wickedness about someone perhaps falls under Namima. And we know that Namima is one of the reasons a person is punished in the grave. The Prophet wasallam was walking by two graves. مر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على قبرين فقال إنهما ليعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير أما أهدهما فكان لا يستتر من البول وأما الآخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم was walking by two graves and it was in a I think a graveyard where Yahud were and others and he said verily they're being punished in the grave. That affirms for us there is a punishment in the grave. <inaudible> Verily they're being punished and they're being punished for something which most of the people don't consider to be a big deal or great. <sighs> then the Prophet ﷺ said, <inaudible> As for one of them, <inaudible> He used to not wash himself properly when he was going to the bathroom at Karmakum Allah. وَأَمَّا الْآخِرِ فَكَانَ يَمْشِ بِالنَّمِيمَ As for the second one, he used to spread wickedness, namima. Spread things about someone with the intent to spread evil throughout the community. So look and be cautious and think and reflect. Is that you? Because many people do this and they enjoy it. Whether that's physically going around and speaking to people, or whether that's through social media. Another benefit of this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is this hadith shows us the importance of giving fi sabilillah and seeking the reward and the pleasure of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala by assisting others. Servants and assistance equals the pleasure of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So this is a very important trait that we have to establish within our communities. Another benefit of this hadith 
is this hadith shows us also the importance and the superiority of talib al-ilm and busying ourselves with knowledge, whether that's memorizing, whether that's listening and taking knowledge, whether that's sitting in the circles of ilm with fiqh and Quran, whether that's going on a rihla, a journey to seek knowledge, whether that's reciting Quran in the masjid with a teacher, whether that's doing it online, all of those are ways in the various ways of Talib al-Am, whether you're doing research, Islamic-based research, looking up masail and issues, writing about it, writing a book, writing treatises, making durus, doing khair. So this hadith shows us the fadl of Talib al-Ilm and that Talib al-Ilm is Talib al-Jannah. Talib al-Ilm is Talib al-Jannah. Seeking knowledge is seeking Paradise, as the Salaf used to say. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said in this hadith, مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمَسُهُ بِهِ عَلْمًا سَحَ لَاللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us that there are various ways to traverse the path to knowledge, as we mentioned. Especially now, there's so many wasail ta'lim. There's so many different ways and means to seek knowledge. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the superiority of sitting in the masajid for ilm and dhikr. And so this, Ahabat al-Fillah, this shows us also a benefit what, which distinguishes the one who goes out to seek knowledge and sits with the ulama sunnah from the person who just has a sit at home or the person who sits in their country and they're unable to uh, mix with the, 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 the scholars and the students. There's an d- additional reward that those who go in the path of Allah and sit with the ulama gain and sit with the students gain is because they're sitting in the masajid and the halaqat and the malaika are witnessing and rahma and mercy descends upon them. And for those who have sought knowledge in those halaqat al-ilm, they know what this hadith is talking about from first-hand experience, from that ni'ma min ni'amillah. Another benefit of this hadith, ahabat is this hadith shows us also the fadl of Muslims getting together to seek knowledge and to read together and to benefit one another with fawaid and reading hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa la alayhi wa sallam. This hadith also shows us the fadl and benefit of reflecting upon the Quran, reciting the Quran, thinking about it, Understanding its meaning, contemplating it, looking at the ayat koniya, meaning those signs in the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists in his wonder and his majesty, exalting him to barak wa ta'ala by, by seeing the beauty of his creation to barak wa ta'ala. And there are so many ayat and ahadith to illustrate this for us, these, these, these points. Those are just some of the benefits from the many benefits of this hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And until the next lesson, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.